gang fight here in the corner. Everyone would bail out and we'd have a big fight. We'd beat the shit out of one another, kick and a punch and shit. And then everyone would take off. Now a gang fight is you pull up in the corner with an Uzi, you spray the fucking corner and you take off. That's a gang fight. Take you now to Chicago, where this past weekend at least 52 people were shot, eight of them killed in a wave well, of violence evening, across the city. Well, this evening, Chicago police were investigating the shooting. Authorities have released a body cam video related to a deadly police shooting in Chicago. 18-year-old Paul O'Neill. New numbers in from the city of Chicago, and they are not good. Shooting deaths already up top. Last year's total, and the summer is not even over yet. Violence on the streets of Chicago. Dozens of people have been shot, many of them killed, and all in just a matter of hours. Whatever gang that stays around here, welcome to Chirac, youngin. He's got more bullets in his gun than years he's been here. He was a tattoo tear and the 30 shot clip. Bit on the block as his brother got pinched. His daddy not there, y'all, so his daddy don't exist. look like a whole nother world. We're now in Inglewood, Inglewood, Chicago. We used to it, we've been seeing this. A lot of neglect has come to a lot of major cities when we had the thing that happened with the mortgage industry. All these loans was going on for these non-occupied owners and these stated buyers. A lot of people was buying these investment properties. So when this stuff started turning bad, they got an investment property, they're renting out to a renter, and nine times out of 10, if it's in the hood, it's probably a section eight tenant. So now you have these people in these neighborhoods and they're getting, they got they in these properties that's getting neglected from the owner, which leads to the board of houses. But Inglewood was always one of these neighborhoods. It looks a, a, a tad bit rougher since the Great Depression of the mortgage industry. He wanted to be somewhat like in the line, like to let everybody know that he could be somebody if he set his mind to it. She holding the family together right now. She the muscle. She say he goes. She don't be liking a lot of that fancy shit though. So she uh, you get a pair of shoes, she uh, keep the motherfuckers for years. Won't even ask for no shoes. You know what I'm saying? I, she don't even want me to change the blinds. I try to do all that, she don't want me to do nothing. She want everything original. That's just her. 
Все ready. Dirk is a loving person. He has a good heart. In any way that he can help you, he will do that. I used to think my grandma was kind of like, didn't really know. She'd tell me like, I'm praying for you, all that. I'll leave out 8 o'clock for school, come back like at 9.30, and be like, oh, they gave me early this month. <laughs> I got like I got like two weeks out of that. Cause she started catching on, like, hell no. I never thought I'd be rapping, man. I just like, I don't know what the fuck I do right now. I ain't like school, period. So shit. I feel really blessed. We met um at a friend's house. Somebody um introduced us and we were just um became friends and it went from there. It was two ways, basketball or streets. Basketball ain't for everybody, you know what I mean? My daddy went to the fair, lost seven months. So I studied hearing about him and seeing what he do, hopping to the streets. I thought I was like, like 10, 9. Big sister, daddy, D thing. See, I was locked up at the time, but. <laughs> yeah, he was locked up on this pitch. Right. Little sister. When we went to go see my daddy this time. Um, he was locked up this time, too. He was locked up both times, man. The fuck? That's my daddy doing life right now. D thing, you know what I'm saying? That's his, that's his older brother, you know what I'm saying? That's my best friend. We we all kind of grew up together, you know. And basically, like, so we just embrace Dirk as our as our own little brother, you know. I don't, I don't got no real little brother, so it's kind of like I cuffed him as my own, you know. I ain't know I'd be rapping this shit. I worked for a call center, and um, he worked for a factory, and I was pregnant with my son, and um, we were just trying to get our life in order to take care of our kids. It was a struggle. We used to scrap up money to go to the studio and, you know, do videos. And that's how this shit really started, it's just like this and other neighborhoods on the rack and, and, and the records, you know? I was just playing around. We put out the song, I'm a hitter. 10,000 views was a lot back then. 5,000, 10,000. Just kept going up to 50,000 and shit. So we like, man, we gonna start taking this shit serious. Me and my homie SB and Chino, we was in Iowa hustling and shit. We saw his YouTube and shit. He just like, damn, this shit, he was just doing it for fun. And we just went to put the money behind it. We took a series, and that's what it is right now. I wasn't really taking a series at first. His name was supposed to help out in these streets. It just took heed of the We realized that's, that, that Dirk had a, you know what I'm saying, he had a little gift, you know what I'm saying, he could flow. And so we just basically pushed him to do so. It's no secret, Chicago is named Chirac. That's the nickname of Chicago, and it's Chirac because the murder rate in Iraq one year um, was lower than the murder rate in Chicago. So that alone draws a lot of interest of people wondering what is going on in Chicago. Why is all these killings going on? He's doing a shoot. You know, why is all this violence happening in Chicago? So it draws attention to Chicago. People want to know what's going on. And of course, with hip hop and the essence of hip hop, the art form, it's always been a person able to speak from the streets and give their perspective of what's going on in the city. So that alone let a voice to be heard from Chicago. Now, who's the guys to speak? It's always the youth who's most of these murders happening with, it's the youth in Chicago. So now everybody want to hear what they got to say. They're talking about it in their songs. You hear it in the slang, you hear it in, in, in the stories they're telling. But people want to know what's going on, what's led to this. Project's gone, shit, they knocked the projects down. It hurt, it hurt a lot of motherfuckers, because the feds came and snatched everybody, you know? The motherfuckers got hungry and got to doing all kind of shit. You gotta build some family. No one like that at first. We all can walk to the store, play ball in the park and everything. That shit over with now. There was more structure with it. Like, he getting to it with him. So why I big homie go over there and be like, man, we, are, we finna get this money, man. Tell him to chill out next time. There won't be no war, you know what I'm saying? But everybody went to jail, so everybody want a name. You a nobody, you kill him. Now you a somebody. Now everybody scared of you. Everybody want that type of name. You waking up depressed, feeling like shit. You could know you can just go kill him with all the money. Now you got a name, now you extorting motherfuckers. Now I'm gonna give you money off the strength of your name. That's how it works over there. You know? A lot of bullshit. Motherfuckers just try to fit into something. Like, bro, they motherfucking think they don't want to be no lames out here. Mm, man, fuck that shit, man. I ain't never shot no nigga. I ain't no motherfucking lame. Keep your eyes open. Watch everybody. Everybody up. Keep your head up. Look, the Jakes on their way down. Everybody up. Keep your head up. Look, the Jakes on their way down. Everybody up. Keep your head up. Look, the Jakes on their way down. Everybody up.
dread head. Fucking crime scene. You seen the dead man on my back? Crime scene, yellow tape, shooting everything. Police here, what? Normal day in Chicago. I ain't chose this lifestyle, man. This lifestyle chose me. Back in like 04, I ain't even play with guns, you know? So all my people start getting hit up, all that shit, man. You got to get with it or get lost. I value my life, that's why I keep it on me. I ain't going, man. I'd rather get and receive shit. I'd rather they family than my family, you know? I mean, this shit been like this forever. It's just really starting to get out there like that now, you know? Since all these little kids been getting killed and shit. I lost so many guys to this shit. I'm talking about niggas I've been going since yay high. Then it really fucked my head up, made me look at life like, Totally different. That shit put a lot of a lot of hate in me, just like man. These streets fucked up out here, man. It's our coke. That shit came with us. I know what we got brought up. We just, but right. shit just. We seen right. shit. We seen ah uh, big shit. niggas, ah uh, older bros in this shit doing shit. We wanna do that shit too. Yeah. We doing that shit at the young age. Like this shit. This like this shit. Yeah, we yeah. just man. Yeah, we trying to get out this shit though. We trying to make a way. Shit, my fuckers. I ain't gonna lie, shit. A lot of motherfuckers gonna be selling that gun these days. Motherfuckers be getting that shit. Right, right, right. These days, guns, so. I was gonna start rapping that age, shit, none of that shit, none of that shit on me. Shit, shit, I'm supposed to be 13. And and with that shit, you get that and shit. And it's a lot of ways to get clapped. Mistaken identity, anything. You ain't gotta do what this is. This end of some bystanders getting killed in this shit every day, man. That's why you gotta keep the stuff. Yeah, I like keep some big shit in case a nigga try me, I'm gonna cook his ass. He left out him and his friend and they waiting on their ride and he walked and looked to see if he see the, the ride We got to live the hardest out of anybody out of Chicago, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, you see what Rondo and see they, they just took a, hard, a lot of time, bro. That shit is unfortunate. Like, shit, make my stomach hurt to think about it. We lost LA coming from a studio. Cause, you know what I'm saying? He was in the wrong place, wrong time, wrong surroundings. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, like, it's just been crazy. Like, I, the main people in the spotlight for 600. Just, just see the dead in jail, you know what I'm saying? Like even the, the all the, the soldiers, you know what I'm saying? Like it's down to my day one niggas out here, bro. Yeah. And, and most of them getting locked up, you know what I'm saying? Federal and all type of shit catching up with niggas. You know what I'm saying? So like, 
we, you know what I'm saying, we still strong, but the main faces that everybody knew, you know what I'm saying, they gone. Yeah, stuff like that. They found them guilty, bro, like, because we got to speak to him before that, you know what I'm saying, he was a whole different person, they just, was, him and see they tripping away, be like, oh, what type of watch is that, what type of chain is that, right, you know what I'm saying, ain't life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, it's hard to come back from that, bro, now they got 40 years of peace, you feel me? So I, I can only imagine. Yeah, bro. All the honesty shit, I know I did. You know what I'm saying? I know I did. That's some real shit. But it was like, man, that, that prosecution, they was just some bullshit in our room. Like, they was just, you know, that shit is crazy. That's, that's some shit I don't ever want to go through. I done been through some shit for drugs and shit like that, but that shit right there. And I love bro them. They was on their way to take off. Feel me? Like, they was on their way to be superstars, you know what I'm saying? Now I had Dirk fucking with him, and C they had Sosa fucking with him. You know what I'm saying? Because all us growing up together type shit like that, you know what I'm saying? C they and Sosa was good friends for real. So mm -hmm. they, they was gonna make it, bro. They was gonna make it. Yeah. Yeah, now look, now they 40 years in jail. They gonna be home till they motherfucking 60 years old, you feel me? That shit was crazy. LA, LA came around around like, when LA came around? LA came around around like, I say like, when was it, 2013, 2014, 20, 2010, LA came around, about like 22, I think. You know mm. what I'm saying? LA came around, a little cool little dude, you know, smooth ass little nigga. You know what I'm saying? Getting little bitches and shit, you know what I'm saying? Actually, LA, LA let me in his first track ever. It was, um, Murder, that shit, it's called murder. You know what I'm saying? It's talk the shit, get murdered. Oh yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. That shit, he let me hear that shit. I put, I'm oh, damn. Shorty going crazy. He let me hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the first song. I guess he went in the studio and did. He let me hear that shit. I'm damn. Shorty, you going crazy? That's when I thought, like, man, let me create this 10, 600 shit. You know what I'm saying? For the gas, like, like, you know what I'm saying? I want to have a label, like, had this shit, had this do this shit the right way. Start a movement, a real movement with this 600 shit. You know what I'm saying? So I named that shit 10600. LA was like one of the first artists with 10. Rondo. Shit, Rondo. I knew Rondo since goddamn it. Rondo was like, I think Rondo was like 13, 14 or some shit. Bad as hell. Young as hell, bad as hell. I knew him since back then and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? When he stayed around in the area and shit. He came around and shit. My little brother now, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, these little niggas, man, this little nigga crazy. You know what I'm saying? He always been a little wild, little motherfucker. Yeah. Tweaking this shit. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I always been tweaking this shit since he been around this shit. Mm. So, so, see, they introduced you to Rondo. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They came up around, you know, see, they and Rondo, they around the same age group. So, Rondo came up with, with see, they, you know what I'm saying? They was hanging out. That's how I really, you know what I'm saying? Got a tour on Rondo like that. You know, that's a sensitive subject, but. You know what I'm saying? Bro recorded, you know what I'm saying? I, I record most of, most of the gang shit too, you know what I'm saying? I had my own stew at the time. Um, shit, bro last song was Brothers. He recorded it at my stew, you know what I'm saying? If y'all go back to this timeline, y'all y'all see. He, got, he even sitting there with one of my chains on and shit, you know what I'm saying? Just record, just talking shit, doing him, you know? You know? You know how LA talk, you know? But yeah, um, shit, he had told me, out his mouth, he, he bro, yeah, send this to Dirk. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mine, I got you, bro. He left. He said, I'll be back in the morning. You feel me? He texted me. I woke up, I, I woke, actually woke up to the text. He, bro, don't feel no type of way. Uh, shit, I'm finna go to this other nigga's store. Uh, he, been, he been begging me to come or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool at the time. You know what I'm saying? A couple hours later, bro, I got that call, bro. I'm saying I got the call. Shit, that was one of the worst days of my life, bro. So they finally let me in and see him, and he was on. Um, he was laying there, but he looked like he was asleep. Like he looked, and he looked as small. Like he was wrapped up like a baby. Like from his neck down, the rest of his body, he was he was wrapped up like a baby in a sheet, like wrapped all the way around. So they had him wrapped from his neck on down. Mm -hmm. Told me I couldn't touch. I don't touch him. Only can touch from the neck up. So you know, 
I was looking, that's when I, you know, noticed about the dried up tears. Like, that's when I seen that. I saw the tears and I, you know, I was just looking at them, just thinking. I couldn't, like, cry or nothing. I just was, like, in shock from it. I was in shock. And then I, um, I asked the doctors, could they uh, give me some scissors so I can just, like, cut a couple of his dreads. And I, like, rubbed his face a little bit. He was still warm. You know, he wasn't, he was still, like, he was sweet. So he looked regular because I just wanted to have his DNA for whatever. You know, people say they got a baby or they pregnant or whatever. I wanted to have DNA. So if any of that ever came, you know, in the future, I would have his DNA and they didn't have to use my DNA. One person, a girl came in my DM and told me that, but I didn't really believe her because she said that she was in labor when he was in the hospital. When he got shot, it made her go into labor. We had, I had a CD and somebody took it. We had a song on it. It was called Trap Money. Never, it's never been heard, but I don't know what happened to this. We can't find the CD. I don't know what he did in the streets. Okay. That's where any kid, that means every kid live a double life. You, you one way to your mama, and then when you go outside with your friends, you somebody different, you know? Ain't, ain't nobody, that's everybody. Okay. That's just what it is. Wow. wow. Interview when he had the little chain, I mean, he, he wanted a gold chain, right? Uh-huh. He didn't have one, he only had a charm. And he safety pinned it to his shirt. It was Thanksgiving. I and, um, it was Thanksgiving and my auntie came and she saw that and she just laughed so hard and he started crying. He it it hurt his feelings. He he was a cry baby when he was a baby. He he cried so bad and I mean we laughed about that for years. Like every time we thought about it or talked about it, he used to get mad, but it was it was just like the funniest thing ever. I, I think I think it comes I think it's season, you know what I'm saying? She gonna always get bad, then look good, and then always bad, you hear me? Because there's different generations coming up, you feel me? So we don't know what's going on with the new generation, how they how they looking at shit, like they want to be like the gang leaders, you feel me? I see it really right now getting, it's, it's getting bad, shit, because I wanted to be like my daddy and them, you feel me? They was drugs, they was doing whatever they was doing, and gang chief and all that, you feel me? I ain't never want to be no uh, a teacher, no lawyer, no shit like that. I ain't never, I want to, that's all I knew. So you see it right there, and we, and we from the slums of Englewood, you feel me? Ain't no other outreach. That's why they took that rapping shit running with it. Hey, Looney Savage, I'm from the Sean Money, 6 9 for Austin, Shot Rock, Jill and Noise, you already know I'm rocking. Niggas been getting killed, all this type of shit. This shit been going on, this shit ain't nothing new. I don't even think about it, my man just called it to the bullshit already, so I don't whip it up, you know? It hurt you when one of your guys died, but shit, that's how this shit go. I ain't scared of none of that shit. This shit happened, it happened, shit. Oh, this shit forever. Motherfuckers dying for this shit. Ain't nobody gonna get cool with nobody who killed one of their men. Shit ain't gonna never end. Shit gonna be always forever. and I like to see everybody win, so it just made me happy, to, you know what I'm saying? You know, like shit, I was like one of the first ones that put in that work, you know what I'm saying? Broke down the doors so that like, all of them could come through and all that, so that's like, that's how I look at that shit. So I, I like to see all the like, the young niggas and shit that's, that's, that's blowing up and getting them big looks. I like that, because it's like, shit, I, I, I put on for that, you feel me? Rest in peace to Pac, man. You know what I'm saying? Was, that, that's who like, it started drill move, you feel me? You know, he, he's the chief. So I like, I started just going hard with the shit, you know what I'm saying? Me as well as others. But I just was like, you know what I'm saying? I just 
and it's, I was just killing the streets on it, you know what I'm saying, the mixtapes and all that type of shit. And I mean, like, it, everybody stopped to hit the real shit. I started, you know what I'm saying, dropping mixtape shit. Shout out, right, uh, Drillinoy and whatever. And then I dropped a song called Shout Out Drillinoy. Just, just, you know what I'm saying, putting on for like, for pack and shit. Then yeah, got down and shit. That shit just got, that shit just got big. So, then everybody started, you know what I'm saying, rocking with it. But it wasn't just me, but it's like, I say, like, like I got that shit out. Drill is like hype, like turn up. It's, it's, it's got a lot to do with violence. You know I'm saying drill, like get killed and all that, kill you and this and that. So when they call it drill music, everybody start doing it. It's a way to communicate. It's a way to let people know where your struggle come from and, and basically your story, your perspective of life. It's tough when we grow up. It's basically explaining what we do every day, you know what I'm saying? We don't live a life with silver spoons or a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta make do what we gotta, you know what we got. It's organic. It's not no fictional, it's not no fictional shit. You know, they talking about things that are happening in Chicago. They talking about shootings that do go on in Chicago. Um, what, what people don't know is it was blocks going against blocks, you know, basically, beefing on wax, but nobody knew to the masses because they don't know anything about these neighborhoods. They don't know who's, you know, who's from this hood or who's from that hood or even the name of the hood because it's not a well-recognized neighborhood. Them going back and forth led to hotter and hotter music, speaking about things that's going on in reality, and there it goes, your organic street music. Back then, all these bitches didn't want me. Now when they see me, they be acting like they know me. Young savage can't starve, I'm gonna eat. I don't even know what happened to the old me. Niggas talking shit, but they don't want no beef. Chopper hit him, leave his ass on the slow leak. No limit, all these op niggas want peace. And you know I got the squad like Kobe. For real though, they used to call me a weirdo. All of a sudden, I'm all these niggas' hero. Taking off, but I'm about to switch gears though. How the fuck you chopping hard and you still broke? Bad bitch with a bad little walk. I'ma bag that bitch. I ain't even gotta talk. Just spent 10k and I forgot what I bought. I be flexing on haters. Give a fuck what you thought. Money on his head, trying not to get bought. Mm. My youngest doing his, trying not to get caught. <laughs> Trapping all day with the hard and the soft. Thirties in the cut, trying not to get off. Real shit, that's the life of a young nigga. Round round, still gotta keep the guns with us. A lot of hating ass niggas and these groupy ass bitches. I ain't tripping cause I know this shit come with it. Mm. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> The violence was already here, so with our music, we was just talking about what was going on, really about that, and they was putting in stories like they like really got to pay attention to what we talking about. You feel me? They got to really pay attention when a nigga say something crazy, and they be like, "Bro, what is he talking about?" It's really like some Chicago shit, like niggas only know in Chicago. With Chicago not having a real music scene, at first it was, it was just expressing themselves. Artists was expressing themselves having a love for the art form and just doing it, which has been going on here forever. It just never got this much light until the violence started getting at the media. Then they start chiming in on what's going on in Chicago. What happens recently is a lot of artists have been getting deals from Chicago, record deals and been seeing some real money. Now it displays to the youth and from the youth that you can do something positive to create an income for yourself as opposed to doing something negative to provide an income for yourself. And if you do this that's positive to provide an income to yourself, it's more long term, then what you can do temporarily, get some temporary relief. Now, presently, a lot of them is doing it for the income. A lot of them are popping up because they know they can get some money from it now. And they're talented. You know, they're talented. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Maybe you got some, some guy that's gonna pop out that may be the next Jay-Z that we never heard of, but stopped rapping because he didn't see a a future with being from Chicago rapping. Now that he see that artists are actually getting money from Chicago and getting exposure they deserve rapping, they may come out, you know, and that'll be great for hip hop. Girls can say, girls can say, I'm gonna drop me a mixtape too. Cheeseburgers and fries. <laughs> <laughs> Fly with the birds. Fly with the birds, that I stuff my end is stupid, but I love flying the spur. When you got money to burn, you can't control how you splurge. The block going bananas every day, feel like the furs, yeah. Coupon lane, 
Swag on me, what's in my pockets don't like it's true religion The jeans, 50 bricks on the counter, that's a dope boy dream Don't get the picture, I paint it like a pair of mesquine Yeah, Molly a shooter, huh. easy a rider Twilly a hustler, I'm the Yayo provider I got my bitches but naked, they in the kitchen with powder Leaving out of that bitch with a half a brick up inside them I'm going white girl crazy, white girl crazy Spending racks on that bitch, all the black girls hate me but I don't give a fuck about a chick or feelings Unless it's Christina I'm just trying to make a million off the same old white girl Same old white girl Same old white girl Same old white girl Put that shit in the pot Wait till the shit is solid Cook it up out the pot You chop it and make a profit Icy Duck, aka Ellie Lawless Inc. Y'all know what time it is You hear me? Oh, no, I just try to keep shit as real as possible, man I try to Cut down on the lies. You might, you might hear me say something, pull up in something. I ain't got shit though. I've been me before that rap shit. So shit, you know how that shit go. And everything by me just doing that rap shit, they just seeing me trying to do something good. They gonna get behind me and just fuck with me no matter what. Shit. I don't really like this rap shit. Tell you the truth, this shit, this shit stressful, man. You gotta keep your eyes. Open everybody try to put their hands in this shit, you know. Everybody. Like after all the work you did, everybody try to come in and get their little, you know. That oh. shit, you, that shit. Oh, I'm losing thing. too much sleep. By you being successful over fuck niggas, niggas who you was probably fucking with gonna be bad because you successful and go fuck with your enemies. You know? That's that. That's what this shit bring. It's a job to me now, so it mean a lot. Like I said, at first it didn't mean a lot to me now. Now everything I say. Is it gonna be in the public eyes? So I gotta be careful what I say and everything. Why well, take it serious now? I'm saying it's a career. It's time to eat. We looking at them. So it's like it's, it's better for like the younger youth and things, you know what I'm saying? People like that. You know what I'm saying? Or, or talented people. You know what I'm saying? It used to be if you was talented and you was in Chicago, it's like you just got a talent for nothing. Now it's like you gotta have a talent for a reason. You can make it out of Chicago. It's some shooters in my clip. Rondo, let's go do a hit. I'm about to empty half the clip, but you just lay low when a dip. You know they always be running. I'm going to catch them every rip. He talking sick and hopping towards. That this way. He came up from the hollow tips. Can't rap with me. A lot of them niggas won't rap with me. You got to keep me on the side of me. Try to look at the time on the blind of me. Them blocks, that's my cup of tea. He shoots it, so it's going to fuck with me. Let it clear, we can see it with a bump of beat. And I'm a savage, so don't put the trust in me. Them things in the back, load of 50 up. Can't lie. I'm gonna keep fit to tuck and everywhere we go, they remember I stand in your block. Nigga, no old block gon' set it up. 300 more block gon' set it up. We ride, we ride with the winners up. I better never be cooked with them. I got a homie named Mac. Can't line you up. One false moon boy in the nine is up. Fuck all money that's me climbing up. She wanna fuck me, you know what I'm trying to Give me talk, give me talk. I smash her up and let's see these things. We smash it up. What you talking about? Hey, hey, we gone, bro. Hey, 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 yo, shh. Hey, yo, shh. Fuck all these rappers, bro. Six up. Like, think of the concert and give me y'all hurt because we right. clock the whole right. boom, boom. I roll that dope shit. On the block, we smoke the shit. And niggas back because the cop called kill a motherfucking doc shit. That's one thing I never did. And that's another bitch. Because I'm drunk shit. I hit all my click. My OG told me to slow down. I see an album to get low down. Take him down, get smoke so pound. Hard to deep on empty the round. Get caught, but I won't make a sound. But it's dead when I'm shooting out of town. We said green and white and no brown. I'm in a bus shell right now. These niggas ain't really in the field. Little folks going in for the kill. Late night trying to creep with steel. Shine down on the hot shit field. Now I love when I'm off that pill. Can't change, boy, I'm too real. They say real niggas don't say real. Well, fuck nigga, I'm real. If he can't break bread, he fake. I had one more bottle on my plate. It was me and bro, we was in the store, and both of us got fish and cake. A bitch can't tell me she late. Like, I like spinning that real shit, like, what's going on right now? My daddy, my family, um, friends, the judge, the police, everybody hate us. Well, everybody loves us. You gonna hear about everything in them raps. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice Wednesday. <laughs> about this being a new generation, so many young people that run around so wild that 
it's catching people's attention. They ain't never had no young Chicago rap artist that's, that's catching everybody's ears. I need a hit up, dread hit driller, cash down nigga, cause I'm a lady. Cryptonite. I didn't been through it all day, so all my music is, is basically me. I grew up a single parent. My mother raised me. My father been incarcerated for 18 years now, and I'm 20. This is the Casa Rosa for Alberta. I grew up from seeing people get their brains blew out of broad daylight, seeing dope fiends, overdose, all in the house. I used to hit licks for a living, and like, I used to fight every day. I used to play with guns every day. Like, I used to go to jail at least two or three times out the week and get out of three, four, five hours and go back to jail and do the same thing again and again and again. And like, one day Block called me up, cause that's my blood cousin, you know. He called me up and was like, I'm ready for you to leave this lifestyle alone. Come get in the lab. I don't want to get my get his lick back. I just want them to see that we're in a lose-lose situation. We only lose now. Though. Not live for violence. That was a hard game, though. I went to prison based because some guys, I'm not going to say I didn't do what I did, you know, because I did do it, but I got with some guys that was, you know, from another area, and they got into it with some rivals, and then I was accused of killing one of them and crippling one of them, and I just did my time in prison, I, you know, as they say, I continued my criminal activity in prison. I got locked up when I was 18, I got out when I was... 56, and I didn't want to die in prison. prison. When I got to prison, I was like 120 pounds, and it was rough as hell. If you wasn't tough, and you wouldn't fight, and you wasn't willing to kill, then you was in trouble. You was simply in trouble. And when I got there in prison, I said, look, I'm not gonna let nobody harm me. Whatever I gotta do, whatever I gotta do to survive, that's what I'm gonna do because I'm not going to let nobody harm me. And that's how it was. When I first got to prison, you had to be, you had to be willing to go the whole, the whole nine yards. It's like guys ain't, they just ain't being men. I mean, I'm just serious, they just ain't being men. Since I've been out, I done seen how the city looked, and it looked devastated. Back in my day, if they was after you, they came and got you. They came and got, they didn't shoot in the crowd, they just came and got you. But now they killing kids and it don't make no sense. I seen a lot of young guys come down to the prison. First I thought they was weak. When I realized they got 50 years and 100 years and they ain't never getting out. And they walk around looking up at the sky. They, they lost. It ain't gonna pay off. When I got paroled, the state's attorney didn't want me out. Attorney general didn't want, didn't nobody want me out. But I tend on staying out. I don't tend, and if I can help, community anyway, I'm willing to do it. It feel good to be out. It, it really feels good. And especially to know you ain't going back. And it feels good. That's your most profound rap sitting inside of you. And you talking about killing somebody else. It's hard. Every day it's hard. And it's Why just, is it hard? I'm tired of living like you. Like I'm tired of it. It's just like I don't want it. It's like it's no option. It's just like some days you. It's like you wake up. You want to be that good person. You want to be. And you can be that bad person. And some days it's just gonna give you no option. And some days you just gotta do some things you don't want to do. It. Some days you just live the life that you gotta live. So I come in so I can get away from that. Do you feel like you learned something here? Yeah, it's just make. I feel like it's helping me. Find out what I want to do, cause like, it's just like growing up with no parents. You just, it's just like, you don't really know who you are some days. It's just, then it's just like, I keep losing people. And so it's just like, eventually I'm just like, it's just gonna be me by myself. And it's just like, one day I'ma just, it's just like one day it's just gonna, I'ma be alone. You know, you always heard the saying, pick your battles. 
I say scratch that, pick your enemy. Because when you choose your enemy, you know what all battles is getting ready to come. You ain't got to pick the battles one by one. If you choose your enemy, like your, your enemy is the fact that everybody around you is dropping and you got to beat whatever that is in the life of your family that's doing that. You got to be the leader to lead your family out of that. You're going to have children one day. You're going to have a wife. You're going to be successful. You got to conquer whatever that is, man. You know what I'm saying? You could do that. I think about sometimes, like, why didn't Ryan Fest pop? I had to be here. And now, now, that God has put me where I need to be, now I can sink, you know? Right for wrong, but like I said, I have other kids. I, I can't be there with him 24 hours.